Okay, guys, we're here with some Affinity. I haven't played Affinity for a week or two, and haven't really played against Affinity basically at all in the leagues. Although I have seen it put up some recent results, and it is a deck that I'm very interested in playing, as I have many, many years of experience with this deck. And, you know, with Urza Saga, Nettle Cyst, Thought Monitor, and many other cards you can try in this archetype, um, new from Modern Horizons 2, I want to play some more, and that's what we're going to be doing today. You know, Urza Saga and Nettlesis, both two new cards. I, I floundered back and forth if I wanted to play like more Nettlesis. I may am playing the four the full four thought monitors. There's a bunch of different versions of this deck. And I think there's a bunch of different ways you can build it. And this is like the I, I picked up a deck list. I saw four frog mites. I thought frog mite kinda sucks, so I added some emery's. Trying out emery's, see if that is like good in this archetype. Maybe emery's better with like something that is much more towards like a frog mite mirror enforcer in the new like mirror enforcer with artifact land cycling in the new set or from Modern Horizons, which I'm going to be trying after this, but there's so many different things you can do. Also, you know, one drops you can play with Urza, Saga, and Zeros. You know, we're playing, like, as our fetch targets, Ginger Brute, Hex Parasite, Pithing Needle, Shadow Spear. I'm not sure if you need something like Pithing Needle. I'm not sure if you need something like Hex Parasite. Although I do like the Shadow Spear being really good with something like Nettle Cyst, being a uh, good paired with something like Cranial Plating, and Ginger Brute being really good with Cranial Plating or a potential Nettle Cyst, um down the line. So I kind of like Ginger Brute a lot. I kind of like Shadow Spear a lot. I'm kind of waffling on something like Hex Parasite slash Pith and Needle because um, just having like really circumstantial cards makes your deck a little bit too cute um, for my thought. And usually, you know, once you get rid of the circumstantial cards you really get to like, okay, these are the good cards. I'm going to play as many of the good cards as possible. Your deck ends up usually getting a lot better because Urza Saga, while obviously getting it the one drop at the end is good, it is mainly for its uh, second ability making humongous creatures for this deck. Yep, let's get into it. On the play. This hand sucks. This hand is a lot better. We get a turn one Emery. Seems pretty good to me. Turn one Emery. And, like, hopefully we find some baubles. Oh! I think I realized why Emery was not originally played in this deck. Now I think about it. We're not playing any Misha's baubles. The other deck list I looked at was going for Misha's baubles. So that makes Emery a lot better with the four Misha's bauble. But, that does not discount the fact that Emery can definitely get our artifacts in the yard, which, you know, we have plenty of. So, it's still something to rebuy things with. So, I think it's still fine in this deck list, but definitely not as good as I saw in the other deck list, which gave me the idea of Emery Lurker at the lock here. But Ornithopters, I mean, rebuying Arcbound Ravager seems like not a bad idea, or rebuying Ornithopters when you have an Arcbound Ravager out. I will ditch Pit Needle. Seems like the least relevant card in my hand. Play Emery. Well, we found an Arcbound Ravager to play. Nice turn if we really want to. Lots of... Act Actually, lots and lots of different cards we can play here. But I think most likely it's just going to be Arcbound Ravager. Yeah, that is a big one for. It also potentially gets us to another mana source, which we really want for Urza Saga. Okay, I don't think I care about that card. Hmm. I have to play out Urza Saga, of course. Let's get Arcbound Ravager out. Pass the turn. Emery Lurker Vlock, already looking pretty good here. Really, really want to find a Mana Source. It'd be pretty unfortunate if we didn't have a Mana Source in the top, you know, six cards of our deck, but that's how it goes sometimes. Hmm, maybe I don't even need to find... I mean, a Mana Source would still be good. I'm going to be Galvanic Blasting this 100% of the time. But, um, it allows us to do our thing the next turn. Like, it would allow us to make a token the next turn. Okay, no mana source, unfortunately. Let's do this here. Don't want them to draw a card. Play off. I need one more. I do need one more. That is right. It's like Ornithopter's coming down this turn. So, play off Frogmite. I can attack. And I can just eat, like... An ornithopter or two here at this point. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll eat an ornithopter. Not sure why they just block there. It doesn't really accomplish anything. My understanding. 
Hmm. Well, if we draw... We don't even actually necessarily have to draw mana source next turn, because we can um, go get Springleaf Drum and use, like, an Ornithop to be able to get Cranial Plane down and be able to attack with it now. Slither of the Sun was also nice. That was an option, but I think we had to deal with Stoneforge Mystic, because the chance, even though they got bad at school, if they had the, the big 5-5 five -five thing, like, we can't really deal with it. So it's unfortunate that we couldn't play out the Hex Parasite last turn. Let's tap this for one mana here. Go get Springleaf Drum. It's pretty unfortunate we just, like, completely whiffed. We could have gotten Pithing Needle and cheese them, but I think doing this is better. Could have gotten Pithing Needle to strand their Flooded Strand out there, but I don't think it would have been as good. Hmm. What are they going to cast here? I'm going to play it out. Wow. So go. I guess. What is happening here? Wait, what? I'm baffled. I'm completely baffled here. I don't understand. I don't understand at all. My guess is they're going for, like, Verdict, but if they're going for Verdict, they're just dead regardless, because I just get to eat everything, and my Arcbound Ravager will kill next turn. So they can't just go for Verdict, here. I'm so confused. Why would you Metallic Rebuke my, my Welding Jar instead of the Cranial Plating? I just don't understand. Also, they're playing Metallic Rebuke, which is, I mean, I guess it pairs with the Esper Sentinel, but it's just beyond me. It's just beyond me. So they're playing Esper. Like actual Esper. Okay. Sure. Doesn't actually stop what's happening. Because if they have to crack it, I just welding jar the cranial plating. And then who cares? I'll just let it go, and then this year they're dead. I said Emery, you know, wasn't necessarily going to be as good in this deck list, but the Emery was really, really good on turn. It literally cast a, it cast a card every single turn, which is uh, pretty good, if I do say so. so. I'm a little bit confused. Like, this is something I'm not the biggest fan of, that there is, um, you know... Cards like the Caldera Compliant, because I think bringing in Wear and Tear is just bad now against uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Metallic Rebuke. How do I feel about Metallic Rebuke? Definitely want these. I think Pithing Needle and Hex Parasite are somewhat unnecessary. Shadow Spear also seems unnecessary. So is there something else that I can bring in? Maybe a nice champion. 
Not quite sure. We'll see how it ends up going. But that was... That game just baffled me completely. Hmm. Oh. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Not oh, memory with new cards letting you go on. Yeah, like being able to cast like a thought monitor from the yard seems really, really good. But I think I probably want some uh, Misha's Bobble in my deck. I'm going to build my deck this way. I'm going to keep this hand. That's turn 2 Emery plus Arcbound Ravager. It seems kind of nice to me. I think I had, like, a dream where... So I got DMCA striked like twice on my Twitch channel. And like for some reason I think I had a dream where I like counterclaimed a DMCA. And then like it was from some guy just like trying to mess with me. It's just like really, really weird dream. I guess that's what happens when you get woken up by the 3 a.m. smoke alarm. That was a really good draw. I should have done this in a separate order. That was really bad. But luckily, it doesn't seem like we're going to get punished by, by any means. Amazing with Henry 2. I'm kind of draw to his dice. Yeah, I'm like always super skeptical of like Springleaf Drum in a like kitchen deck or in an Asmo deck. Some people have said it's been, like, nuts, but, like, every time I look at it, it just looks so bad. Talisman of Progress, wow. Next turn, we can just cast Thought Monitor, actually, right? Play Urza Saga, play Welding Jar out, get Thought Monitor for two mana, I think, here? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that'd be two mana. Or I guess we could play out Arcbound Ravager, too, couldn't we? Put out Arcbound Ravager, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, well, I guess we're getting solituded. I mean, we didn't get a Thought Monitor in the way that we 2 for 1 them that way, but we did 2 for 1 them with the Solitude, so I guess I won't complain. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to play this out. I think I'm supposed to play that out because if I play out Cranial Plating equipped Ornithopter and I don't draw a Mana Source, I essentially just have, like, an equipped Cranial Plating. It doesn't do anything. And then, like, we can't really, like, Urza Saga very well. So this is Urza. I'm actually, like, super, super confused about my opponent's deck. Like, I don't think I'll do this. It's fine. Got a Willing Jar out of me. Three mana for zero mana seems like a bad trade for the opponent. Well, got punished for not. Oh, didn't attack for one either. <laughs> I got punished for not playing the cranial plating because we drew the mana source. Unfortunately. Maybe I was supposed to play out the cranial plating because I. What's this do? So it's three mana exile creature, it looks like. Sacrifice this to itself. Put a counter on Ornithopter. Wait, it's prismatic ending. Right. That's that's a punish as well for doing things how I ended up doing. Just 
do this. I get Springleaf Drum. No, it doesn't do anything. I'll just go get Gingerbread then. If opponent doesn't have anything next turn, then we just get to um, equip Grano, like play Grano Plating Equip, kill. What's this? There's a, it's a good one. John Master is here, does it do anything? What can I go get? So I'm gonna have. Yeah, I think I'm just supposed to do this. No. Welling Jar just seems like the best thing to get here. Play out this. Tap this. Equip here. Attack both of these. Force a block on the construct. Be the best thing. Are we listening to DMCA music? It's like kind of DMCA, but not quite. It's not in the same way that, uh, like technically ev all music is DMCA able. It's just a matter of like what music gets DMCA. And I'm pretty sure anime music and like Japanese music doesn't really get DMCA. Um, in the same way that like American music labels DMCA. To my knowledge, at least. I could be completely wrong, you know, doing myself dirty. You know, losing my Twitch account would suck. But, um, I wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world. I'd just have to become a YouTube boy. That was, that was pretty convincing. Both those games were pretty lopsided. Then again, my opponent was also playing like kind of a meme deck. Mm -hmm. I haven't eaten anything yet today, so maybe after this league I'll go get myself some quick food and then... Uh, and then, like, we'll play the second league or something. I'm already starting to get a bit hungry. We'll see how uh, it actually ends up affecting me, if in any way. Seems like it shouldn't really be getting that hot today for me, I believe. I believe it's, yeah, it's topping out at, like, 81 degrees, so... Temperature should not matter that much today, compared to the past days where it's topping out at like 110. Global warming, man. I mean, yes, global warming. I mean, I, I am not going to say that global warming is, like, not happening, because global warming obviously is happening. But, um, like, when something like, the biggest heat wave, or the most amount of heat that's ever happened, like, basically in, like, 200 years, it's not necessarily a, um, like, case of global warming creating it, but rather, like, just a, you know, a un unnaturally hot, like, heat wave is coming through. And it's an anomaly, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. There we go. It is an anomaly. Got Memnite, Arcbound Ravager. I think I'm going to play out Memnite so that I can get closer to this Thought Monitor. Not playing out Memnite anymore, let me tell you. <laughs> that was a nice draw. Like, 
it has a higher likelihood of happening because of global warming. Like, theoretically, if temperatures have risen because of global warming, then, like, the heat wave may have been, like, two to three degrees, like, hotter than it would have been normally. But, like, you could very clearly say it's, like, a global, global warming thing if um, it was, like, continually getting, like, hotter and hotter every single, like, year or five years or something. And then this was, like, the breaking point type thing, right? I'm getting worse. We're off because of climate change. Yeah, 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 but, like, this is more of an anomalous thing than, like, purely just global warming happening. It is a lot of other factors all coming together to create uh, a specific event. How redundant that may sound. Let's see. We have one, we have five artifacts, so if I play this out... I think I'm supposed to attack with Vault Scourge here. Whatever it is, at one. Is under one out of five? Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. Yeah, I'm. I'm saying it is more likely to happen. I agree that it is more likely to happen, but I'm saying it is not the only uh, factor towards it happening. I'm saying that global warming and global climate change is happening. What I'm saying is that it's not necessarily the only factor that is going towards this. <laughs> Do you buy monitors and such? Yeah, it seems really good. Um, my opponent may just be dead here. Let's uh, do some math. Let's do some math. Um, so I Arcbound Ravager, sack here. And this is just a two, so. Play out this. Arcbound Ravager, sack my own Arcbound Ravager to it. I'll be four counters. Dostoff, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, okay. My opponent is super dead. I mean, I haven't been looking into it super hard. This is my, like, incredible, naive, just saying words out, you know, take, if I'll be honest. Pithing Needle being able to name Karn seems good. This member seems good. I'm kind of, uh, if you think about it, I'm kind of just, like, verbal diarrheaing onto... You guys, I want to make myself not as susceptible to like Chalice Zero on the play as well. I think I'm gonna cut a frog mate. Let's try something like this and see how it works out for us. Mm. Yeah, I'll keep this in. This hand seems fine to me. Be yearly occurrence still I mean I hope it's not gonna be a yearly occurrence either that would suck a lot it'd be it'd be awful if it was a yearly occurrence I really hope my opponent doesn't have Tron here okay feels good man wear and tear that is interesting No, I should be doing this instead. Because I'm somewhat choked on colored mana. <laughs> it 
it is unfortunate if they just TKS away my wear and tear or my cranial plating, but I mean, there's a saga that still kind of just gets them. So it's like, even though they got to deal with one of these like really good cards, I mean, there's a saga. It's going to be a problem for them down the line. Wear and tear gone, okay. No reason to bring back Ornithopter, gets countered by the Chalice, and bring back Cleanleaf Drum, we can't do that either, so. What's good is, what's good here is if they have Karn, um, we just get to, like, kill it. Does not look like they just have Karn here. Hmm. Oh, I should not do that. I should probably be activating my sock instead. Getting <laughs> uh, for a couple extra points here. We're like 26 too. Like, they're gonna blast one up to two, but that doesn't actually really matter. Because they still need to deal with the constructs. Pithing Needle. It's actually not that concerning. Not that concerning for me. I think we're completely fine. Oh, Emery Lurker block. Okay, I did not expect that. I expected on the Urza Saga. Trying to think about what I can lose to here. I think Karn the Great Creator is really the only card that I think I can lose to. I think doing this on Karn the Great Creator is the way to go. Now they're forced into chump blocking. Yep, and they've seen enough. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I think my opponent kept a pretty bad hand game one. Game two is a little bit more dispensable with Chalice Zero on play. Like, game one, they just kept, like, they were attempting to Chalice one into, like, a uh, matter shape, right? But if they Chalice Zero, like, randomly, then they would have got us. I should certainly be talking about this, yeah. I mean, I understand their idea. The thing is, they're losing to Saga on board. Probably losing to, like, they're still lost because they have to deal with the Saga and they also have to deal with the Cranial Plating that I'm going to get back. So it's so unlikely. Yeah. on the play they're deciding if they want to be on the play or not though maybe they're gonna be on the draw hmm. Hmm. Uh, this hand seems great to me missing college source but besides that we gotta put four power into play on turn one, so I'm not gonna complain. Not quite the draw I was looking for. I 
What's good is that if they draw an Inquisition, it will not do anything for the rest of the game. Queuing. Let's take a look. Record from Zamella 7. No, they're not multi queuing. Maybe they're multi queuing real life. Oh, okay. Your turn, opponent. I've got Springleaf Drum, Cranial Plating, Archon Ravager, all great draws for me. Screen up plating, one of the very good draws for me. More than happy to trade my frog knight for this. There we go. Yeah. Like Raptor and Bolt Screen instead of Enforcer and Salamander. Well, I haven't played the Salamander version stuff. Oh. Now we have to dodge, like, Azuri or the look at the top card of your deck elf. Realm Walker is a big problem here. Okay, well, they don't have any more mana this turn. Well, this is my first... I haven't played Affinity in, like, a couple weeks, and this is the first deck list I'm trying out. We'll see how the next deck list goes, which is going to be much more Affinity heavy. I mean, we may just be completely fine here. Like, we're 28 life. If they don't have a way to deal with, like, me just attacking with Vault Scourge and killing them, then they're going to be in a pickle. That's a problem. That is a big problem. Okay. Um, well, that changes. That changes a lot. I still don't think we're dead yet. I think we're... I think we may still be fine here. May still be fine. We can't block. Okay. And we're good to go. That was close. That was very, very close. That other champion almost got me. Okay. Just remember, you per Aether Grid. Galvanic Blast. Okay, the needle seems largely unnecessary. Same with Hex Parasite. Ginger Breach is fine. Shadow Spear is fine. Welding Jar. I mean, they probably have some sort of Rex Sage type cards. Probably Frogmite is the card we're going to cut then. That's all good. That's fair. Say I'm not quite what we're looking for. No college source. 
I got to mulligan this as well, unfortunately. These hands are brutal. It's like else I'm not quite sure these types of hands are gonna be getting us gonna be getting us there. Yeah, let's just probably do this. I was supposed to keep the welling jar over the other arcbound raptor, I'm not quite sure. doing anything quite yet. Not really doing anything of relevance quite yet. Got a lot of mana though. I have to imagine they have at least one payoff in their hand. I'm not sure why they take so long when it's like we got exactly an oil open, but you know, to each their own. Okay. Slow and steady. Hopefully we'll win the race, because if it doesn't, we're going to be losing. Realm Walker. That is a problem. Hopefully the top of the deck is not very good. Okay, that was from their hand. That's good for me. <laughs> I think we're in a good spot, though. Like a Maybe not great, but a reasonable spot. Let's play another Ravager, play this out. Tap the Ravager. This. Attack with both. How's it going, Sergeant Snuggles? I see you've been streaming recently. Have you been having fun doing it? That's sketchy. Taking a lot here. Can't block, so that's how it is. Let's see. So we got four, be five, six, seven, eight. We're one short of killing them with Nexus here. So I guess I'll just put everything onto Vault Scourge, right? Or one short, right? It'll be one, two, three. It'll be one, two, three, four. It'll be eight on today. Yeah. One short, so I'll just activate here. I'll have to put everything onto Vault Scourge. There. They're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Thirteen. I'm gonna gain eight. Does welding jar second welding jar give me one more turn against another lord? It'd be three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, nineteen, 
be eight counters here. It does, so I'm gonna do this then. All right, let's see what they got. That's good for me, most likely. Not Reclamation Sage, please. That's fine. Doesn't actually do anything. No Rex Sage, please. We got him, boys. 3060. Oh, not bad, not bad. Not bad. Has anyone ever seen... Why Principe? Has anyone in construct form ever seen over 70 trophies? In a period. I think that's the most I've ever seen. I don't know who Philip Rivers is. Who's Philip Rivers? Philip Rivers. A football quarterback of some sort. Back for the Chargers for like 15 years. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Um, the sand seems good to me. I beat them once. I mean, I've beaten Y Prince Fe multiple times. I believe they just play a ton. Like, the Brazilian players play a lot. A lot, well, I don't know if they still do now, but a lot of the Brazilian players in the past would just play for income. That's why you can see them so high. I had a Spanish player tell me that the Brazilians are, like, super aggro and, like, super, like stick together super hard and, like, trying to make sure no one ever, like, does anything bad to them in any way, because, like, they have, they play for a living, whereas, you know, most other people don't. So they're, like, on edge a lot. somewhere country I forgot I mean I no it is the I'm pretty sure Venezuela is super devalued I'm pretty sure it is uh if this goes to zero does it um just go away does anyone know if it matches the number of chapters. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Okay, so they did have the Metallic Abuke. That is annoying. Not the end of the world. <laughs> Still reasonably have, like, three years worth of evasiveness. It. Okay. Well, they could make it so. Well, okay, they did not want to. That's good for me, I guess. Attack with these in the air. Sure. You got it, button. have the opportunity to respond to this, right? So should I have to imagine? Does this make it so... They still get a search, but then it goes down to two counters instead? why X Parasite is really good with the card. This is probably bad. But like I didn't I really didn't want them to get Pit and Needle for Urza Saga, but they're probably gonna prismatic ending my like construct or something and I'll be really sad. 
My construct is way, way bigger than theirs. is going to be better for the long term. Uh, let's see, what do I want to go get? I just got Pithing Eel Namer as a saga. It's not too bad, actually. I kind of want to just do that. Yeah, I'm just going to do this Namer as a saga. Like, I've finished my as a saga. gonna make this trade straight up. I mean they kind of have to block somewhere. Probably have to block the next parasite or something. Where are the shades at? What are you talking about the shades? Are you talking about these? These are my these are my shades, God they're really dirty right now. These are my shades that I have. Oh yeah. We could do this if we really wanted to. The shades are super super light. Unless you're talking about my glasses. Actual glasses I should wear. The thing is, they like glasses really suck with wearing these. Really not a fan. And glasses besides that is like actually not too bad. What about these? I wonder what they're gonna go get now. How many like things do they have? Eat their spell bomb. That's not a bad one. That ain't a bad one. Urza here. That is really annoying. Draw a mana source, so I probably just have lethal. And they're gonna have to chump at least one of these constructs, though they're gonna have eight to spell one plus this, which is gonna be really annoying. If I draw land here, I think I win. Okay, no land. this out. So to chump one of these. This is the saga plus cards that don't matter. Yeah. Great. How's the deck performance so far? We are 3060 right now. Although some of our opponents have made less than stellar plays, I would say. We're not necessarily playing as the toppest of top tiers at the moment. But I mean, Bamsley, wasn't that kind of like a lot of Urza text the past? It's like, okay, we got like Urza and Emery and like the rest of my cards are kind of just poop suit. But like I've got Urza and Uro and Emery and the rest of my cards kind of like poop suit. You know, just make it, make it happen. How many cards do they have to go get with that? Like, god damn. Sucks is they may just... I guess if they pithing needle my cranial play, then they have to deal with this for another turn. crazy seeing that like aspiring spike has literally just been the top of the magic directory basically every single day and the only person that can like beat him is like croquis in this time slot it's kind of crazy seeing how much he blew up <laughs> the 
fold up. Okay. So they're filling you with the cranial plane now. Just like canister. What do you mean just like canister? Um yeah. Cracking that. There's a saga, okay. Okay, well now they have to jump with either Urza or Emery here. What are they? Okay, sure. I guess they don't actually have to jump, do they? Would have had to chump if I played it correctly. Oh, okay, they're blocking anyways. That's so good for me. That's so good for me. Do this. Play that, and I think the Arcbound Ravager will most likely get us to where we need to go. They don't actually, like, have anything else going for them. I'm so confused why they blocked the Emery there. They didn't have to. They go to, like, one. Sting so long. Now, we had a third mana at some point, kind of. I mean, if we drew, drew a third mana when we had the Cranial Plating in our hand, we win the game. There's a lot of Ginger Brutes. We only have one Ginger Brute. E for one. Actually, that's fine. I need to not at six, though. I have Welding Jar out. E for one, I think, is actively, like, good for me, actually. I'll just take the hit here. There should be more. <laughs> I mean, I have played Affinity with, like, four Ginger Brutes before, and it was actually kind of good, but that was when Mox Opal was around, so... I'm not quite sure it counts. Hmm. Why did I do that instead of getting Arcbound Ravager? What am I thinking? That was really dumb of me. I just completely forgot about Arcbound Rapture in my yard. Well, who needs to play well, am I right, boys? I actually messed up multiple times here. Because I could have left up Springleaf Drum plus Spire of Industry and equipped my Cranial Pudding Instant Speed. Gonna lose their Shadow Spear, which is pretty big, I think. But the E on one doesn't actually matter. I just welding jar my pithing needle on the Urza Saga. Eat the Springleaf Drum and the Ginger Brute. No reason to eat anything with Dark Brown Ravager because it shrinks this. Just did nothing. Okay. They have like another pithy needle or something to go get? Because that would be kind of disastrous. Smeesh bobble, okay. I feel like my opponents made a lot of very weird plays this game. Another bobble, okay. Doesn't really change anything, I believe. Okay, that's fine. 
they just attack you. Hmm. What happens if I eat like everything and put it all into the Arcbound Ravager and like eat that up? Any way that I can really get punished? Not that I can think of. So let's do it, I guess. something it doesn't really matter got you and they're dead right not sure I yeah I'm not sure how they could punish me with one blue mana Maybe they could, some way that I can think of. This card seems good. Next Parasite <sighs> seems kind of unnecessary. I don't know. I think I don't actually want to play X Parasite like in my deck, like basically at all. Um, moving forward. I think Welding Jars are actually kind of bad. Like, fine against EE and kind of bad against, like, everything else. Or am I, you know, let's try something like this. Let's try something like this. I'm still listening. Sand. Like we're like one land or like a zero drop away from the hand being really good, I think. Yeah. Like next turn we can just thought monitor if we want, or cranial plating. Hmm. Pithing needle. What are they named? Moth Nexus? Cranial plating? Oh, okay. Not going for cranial plating, let me tell you. <laughs> Definitely not going for cranial plating. Oh, that was really bad. I forgot. Hey, yay, yay. Oi, yay, yay. That was. That was a, definitely a big misplay there. <laughs> I just completely whiffed my mind on the Esper Sentinel. That was a uh, that was a bad one. That was that one's on me, boys. That one that one's on me. I, that one, you know, I deserve that one a little bit. I deserve that one a little bit. <laughs> uh, I deserved that one. Hmm. 
Well, this pivot needle ended up being real good for them, let me tell you. Being real good for them. Single-handedly stopping my entire game plan because I do the second cranial thing. <laughs> Instead of like an arc bat ravager. My name cranial plane got me good. Probably shouldn't just have six, but you know. Row, row, fight the power. That's the untouchable, break the unbreakable. Hmm. Springleaf a drum. Okay. I'll get him some mana. Fight the power. Row, row, fight the power. Chow, sweetie. That is annoying. And a problem. Need to find something here. Like, give me Arcbound Ravager, give me Wear and Tear. Versus Saga. That is interesting. I just want to do this so that it makes my Urza Saga tokens bigger. Can't block because of, you know, Shadow Spear, so. Need to play towards Urza Saga or Arcbound Ravager. Those are the two cards I've got. I guess Wear and Tear as well is another card I can play towards. Aether Spellbomb. That is somewhat problematic. Ah, uh, just another pit of the needle. Okay, well, now we're really playing towards wear and tear, let me tell you. Now we are really playing towards wear and tear. <laughs> wow, they named Ink... How do you name Ink Moth Nexus there? And they're letting me chump? Sounds good to me. I'll chump off there every day. They didn't want to equip their Shadow Spear. That's crazy. That's big. That is big. I really feel like... really feel like they have Metallic Rebuke open. That's the only reason I could see not like going for the Shadow Spear. But even then, why just play the extra Expert Sentinel? I think we just want to activate this. Make them use, like, this. I think I have to do this. I'll probably spell bomb it. And if they ever tap out, let me just like get to kill them. I guess it's not necessarily just lethal. Where turn equip two planes. We do have a needle, but doesn't necessarily quite work. So scared of metallic rebuke. I think I'm going to play it safe here and do this. You can now another drum. The 
thing is, um, I really don't want to give them extra cards with Esper Sentinel, because those could potentially be, like, weird things that could get me. I'm, like, I'm probably playing way too scared, especially with cards that, like, I don't necessarily know exist. Like, almost surely I'm playing too scared here, but that's where I'm at at the moment. I mean, they didn't attack last turn, which makes you think they don't have an answer for this. I'll just, like, gain a bunch of life. Probably just, like, awful plays that I'm making, but I don't know. Kind of button clicking at this point and just hoping for the best. Kind of button clicking. Oh, I was going Terminal Justice and Final Love. See, Final Love, this is like, this is Modern at its finest. I'm back playing an archetype in which there's been new cards added to make it like close to tier one, if not tier one, you know? This is just good, honest gameplay right here. I fuse on to? What's an enchantment? Oh, I can fuse on to this. Let's see if they would have had it. Hmm. Did they have the Metallic Rebuke? They had the Metallic Rebuke. Makes me feel a bit better about my plays, that they actually had it the whole time. The second rebuke. Alright. Okay. That plays, that plays. Hmm. W Juice Saga. The Vectra Saga. Hey, I don't have Mox Whip, I gotta have something, right? Four oh eight oh, not bad. Not bad. Won't complain. I will not complain. Let me tell you, I will not be complaining. This is uh worth it in the mirror. It depends on how you have your deck built. I think a lot. I'm super bad in this deck. We have Emery. It seems great. We have lots of zeros and stuff. Four shadows from four shadows for any point deck. <laughs> That'd be a disaster. Mm -hmm. And affinity cards. I mean, yeah. The idea is like. I mean, the idea behind like the old Ravager deck was like. You go all in on Ravager, and that's kind of like it, or you have the cranial plating, and those are like your two ways to do it. You also have like some Master Theorems or Extra Champions and stuff, you know, to go along with like some small game plans along with Signal Pest, like as minor backups, but like, Ravager was not there in the sense that like, you just went all in on it. Like, just always. Not good together. I mean, we only really have four affinity cards, and the idea is we play them very early, and then we get to the point where like, Ravager will just be good. Ravager is going to be good regardless, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think people are not playing, like, the correct... Like, people... I've yet to play against a anti, like, artifact card. That is just better, though, than Ravager. I mean, the difference between those two cards is one does not combo with Ink Moth Nexus. If you don't have Ravager, Ink Moth Nexus gets significantly worse. Um... Nettlesis costs one more mana, which is basically like a whole turn 
a lot of the time. Um, and it is very hard to do, like, instant speed tricks with Ravager, in which it makes it hard for them to block. I could see that Nettle Cyst couldn't be better in certain scenarios. I'm not saying that it's, like, a bad card or anything. I'm just saying I think they're not necessarily as comparable because of mana cost associated with it, whereas Ravager is, like, a free cost to do its thing. I'm gonna keep this hand. Probably bad, but I'm gonna keep it. Try it out. We'll see how it works out for me. We'll see how this works out for me. We're playing an Affinity Mirror. Not an Affinity Mirror. We're playing against one of my least favorite decks in the entire format. Yeah, I really, really hate them playing this lantern. I like hate this deck with a passion. I hate lantern with a passion. It is like such an such an abysmal like gameplay experience. I'm glad. I'm actually so glad. Now that I think about it, I think I'm completely glad that Mox Opal was banned for so long because I never had to play against my opponent's deck. Like, such an awful experience. I said. I said. I thought I hated the Mox Opal ban, but since I did not have to play against your deck for so long, I loved it. Those are my exact words. I like. I hate my opponent's deck with with a passion. It is so boring. It's so awful. It's just like it's a deck that that like, tries to make your opponent not, like, play magic in any traditional sense, and it is very slow, and, like, it is built in such a way that, like, you have to play it out if you want to, like, realize equity, whereas, like, you know, a lot of decks that are, like, prison -y or combo -y in some sense usually end the game very quickly, but, like, you could just have five good cards on the top of your deck and win, so you have to play it out. Went to top of round. <laughs> Probably getting in Snaring Bridge or something. I mean, I'm gonna go get Pithy Needle and naming Codex Shredder and hoping that I can get them that way. We have Galvanic. That's one thing that we can do. And we also have, you know, Cranial Plating Instant Speed Equip onto Ornithopters, so... It's also another way to get them. Pretty sure I don't have a basic in my list. Yeah, I don't. Do I want to draw a cranial plate in? I think so. Because we get Pithy Needle named the Codex Shredders. I think we should be in a funnish spot. Okay, now we just sit here forever. Yeah, 
name to M right here. Mm-hmm. Did you excite on yet? Just put plating onto an ornithopter. We can also ravager onto an ornithopter. Ooh, my opponent is F6. Now I get on a freebie. Why do they have the underworld cookbook? It seems so bad. Can you kill bridge? No, but I have I have ways to, to get lethal here. Like, we just have to, like, this is just so dumb. It's just like, okay, we both just sit here waiting, like, doing nothing. Like, so awful. It's truly, like, awful, awful gameplay. What are our outs? Cranial Plating, Arcbound Ravager, both just win the game on the spot. Yep. So, we just like win eventually. I mean, depending on how they built their deck. It's just like Super Sleeper. I'm gonna leave that one on top, let me tell ya. I'm leaving that one on top. You were a dead opponent. Like, this is just awful. We just sat here for like five minutes passing back and forth, just doing nothing. He let me drop. Codex Shredders can't do anything. Though he should have used the Lantern. I was pretty bad of him to not just, like... I had a guaranteed win. He should have, you know, used the Lantern. Let's bring in Metallic Rebukes. You Aether Grid. This. God Blast. Seems unnecessary. Walling Jar seems fine. Do I not want, if anything? Hmm. Hmm. Shall the grid? It does, I believe. Or blitz with Ragavan versus Blurred Prince without like Ragavan. Not much of an opinion. No, this is probably not that great as well. Not sure what else I want to cut. Said I should have needled the equipment. I said you should have lantered away my plating. Blast do nothing. I mean, it depends on how we exactly want to play this game. It's possible that I'm not supposed to be on Blast. And doing this is correct. I can see this being correct. I mean, Blast gets through... Um, I think I have to mulligan this hand. Okay, I have to 
keep this hand and feel really bad about it. I will not complain about drawing Arcbound Ravager. Before turn clock, they sure do. That's me. That got me. Yeah, I need to keep the other one popped around. You, it's always sunny fan. Um, I have enjoyed. I have enjoyed what I have seen of It's Always Sunny, but I have not watched much of it, no. I mean, this gameplay is just awful. <laughs> he named the wrong Nexus. <laughs> Got him. Named the wrong Nexus. Let's go. Named the wrong Nexus. That was a very good top deck. Oh, he just, he just, he figured it out. He said, he said, uh, he, he got some asterisks, asterisks in the, in the chat. Uh, got him. Do something so <laughs> like extra sure, right? May have had lethal here, but I'm not quite sure, and I don't really want to like try to play into like fatal push. No. Better to equip the Ravager. Why? Why would it be better? play removal spell on ornithopter and then um play in snaring bridge here that's the only way they can win <laughs> yeah i think playing around fatal push is correct there it's so hard for them to get me well 5 -oh, 10 -oh? We just, we just straight 5 0 10 -0 with affinity? Straight up 5 0 10 -0 affinity? We sure did. Guess I won't complain. Dexine's pretty good to me. 
Well, if you watch this on YouTube and you liked me just absolutely dunking on my opponents, um, yeah, give me a follow, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch and Twitter in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.